but Richard Rudd likes to rename this easy progress in that translation um, because it is moving forward. It's moving forward when you maybe have been stuck for a little while. When I when I read the background information in Benabel Wen's I Ching, um, it's that like you you've been waiting for something to happen and nothing's happening, right? <laughs> um, and uh, Richard Wright is implying here essentially that it's not just progress. It's not pushed because it's not pushed progress. It's not making progress. It's not mannequin progress. It's not being bored until progress happens, right? It is happening easily. How do we get into a place, a state, a choice state where progress is easy and it's out of this love? unconditional love serving unconditionally in that same energy of already being satisfied. It's the easiest progress you can make. Okay, the experience from Karen Craig Parker is going to bring us home to some stuff we're going to apply to our businesses. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Karen Curry Parker, this new moon invites you to make an honest assessment of your skills, your knowledge, and how you experience how your life experiences have cultivated your wisdom. What aspects of your wisdom do you need to share? So I was telling you right here, like guys, what are you what are you sharing? What are you sharing in your business? Have you already realized you need to share certain things about your life? Because why else would you go through those things, right? And are you are you valuing that wisdom? Is my my question to you. Um, this is about using our resilience. What we have made it through. What we have perceived as failures. What we have perceived as missteps. What we have perceived as things done to us that have harmed who we be, and how we see ourselves, right? And um, and like what, you know, what resilient quality is why we're here. We're still here, right? So that is the beauty of this. So the thing here that she wants to remind us here is that we have to detach from time and timing. So again, we can control a lot of things. We really, we can, we can control our perception of time, but as far as making things happen, um, from others to ourselves, that time and timing looks a little different unless we're transcending, which is part of um, quantum physics, and um, yet cannot be, um, I don't want to say anticipate, because you kind of can anticipate it, but you um, can't force it. And that's probably the best word. You can't force that. That happens when the transcending, the transcendence happens, and then you meet the the thing in time space, and then it becomes part of your reality, right? So that's not something we can calculate yet. Although people are doing good work out there, aren't they? Okay. Um, what we want to remember here is that we might think we can force it and then create something that's a short-term solution, which is usually means more work and usually therefore means it's unsustainable. You can only do that for but so long, right? So if you're doing things purely to stop the gap or force a happening or uh, in that kind of way, then we're adding to, to the difficulty. It's not an easy progress. It's a harder progress. And then it may um, yeah, it may just keep you from trying again or keeping going. So optimally, oh, sorry, <laughs> let's go through her section. So her challenge here is experiencing, uh, experience, I'm sorry, uh, Karen Curry Parker here in the challenge is saying experience can lead to being jaded or bored. So let's say that, um, you think, you know, you've been doing something for a while and you thought it was what you should be sharing your wisdom for, but you're getting bored with it. You're getting bored with it. If you're bored, then there's something that's trying to bring you into the next level of that thing. That is true mastery. You don't, mastery, I feel like people are forcing nowadays. Like if I just 
take enough courses, if I just read enough books, and I am one of those, I love to learn, but um, not out of a forcing, out of a, a, a natural curiosity. And then what I'm learning is to go inward and digest, receive it, right? And then what does it become within me is what I like to bring back to the world, right? And so that's a little different than just continually consuming courses and information, right? But if we aren't um, allowing them to lead us into our next new adventure, right? The next adventure of what I get to know about what I love so much or um, what I get to experience out of my life. Traveling is the one, you know, what kind of new people can I meet? What kind of new food and cultures can I experience, right? So optimally, this energy is being able to know when an experience is worthwhile. So this is something I I talk about in my course, Vocal Creatrix, so if you're starting our live cohort for 2024, only one a year, guys, 2025 is gone. Uh, I mean, when we're done with this one, it's done until 2025. Wow. I'm sorry, y'all. It's the first day of my period. I'm a little punchy. All right. <laughs> so yeah, after the 20. After this course goes live, it's the only live course for vocal creatrix until 2025. <clears throat> I like to teach a lot of different things. So this is something that's core work for me and the people that I work with, but it's not the only thing I teach, right? So I, I gotta get on to my other stuff. I like teaching new things, okay? <laughs> that's keeping, that keeps me excited, that keeps me, um, learning with others. I'm not learning by myself, right? I get to learn with others and it just increases the satiety of what I do. So that's what I like to do. And that's what makes it sustainable for me, right? What's, what makes it sustainable for you? I didn't have that. That's not part of my content or what you get to receive in this one. So maybe add that in. What makes it satiating for you? What, what allows you to transcend the hunger, right? And it's just worthwhile because you're there, right? So unbalanced expression looks like bored with life. So we talked about that in the Jane Keys contemplation. Do I see the value of what I must share? So we talked about that a little bit. The affirmation that we got from Karen Curry Parker is, I share my stories with others because my experiences open doorways of possibilities for others. My stories help others create miracles in their lives. And I love that. You know, sometimes I don't like to tell my failure stories. I don't like to tell, tell people how I didn't, didn't do it right. <laughs> like that is not my favorite thing. But if I can create somebody else's miracle, I feel a lot more generous. Right? Okay, maybe I, uh, maybe I will feel vulnerable, but that it take if it gives you a miracle. I'll tell you a little bit of embarrassing stuff about me, okay? And we'll get into that when you get to the content pieces. So receive, three things to receive in this new moon, Gemini. Receive the value of your own experience. Whatever you're perceiving as those missteps and failures, receive why it gave you exactly what you needed to know to move forward into what was next and why you are passing it on to others. So whatever that product or service is, there's a reason why you see the value in it and why you want to pass it on, right? Receive, number two, the isness of love. So I made that word up because it was, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is good. It's a good word for now. <laughs> so isness of love. Uh, yeah, so again, love tends to be this amorphous idea that we keep shifting into what it means to do things. And, and, and that's, not, that's not how love works. Love is. Love is. It just is. It's the built, uh, Richard Rudd talks about as the built-in framework of life. Without love, there is no life. It is a function 
truly like as a function of life and structure and energy and movement. Yeah. It's just is. So when we are receiving it, we're recognizing what already is within us instead of only recognizing it in the things that we get from outside of us. Okay, so we're receiving the isness of love. We are already love. We are already loving. If we're waiting on somebody else to feel love, then we're not receiving our love. So how can you do more of that? How can we see that isness of love? Three, receive already miracles. So another um the, the, one of the titles of the Gene Keys 35 is uh, <laughs> Wormholes and Miracles. So Wormholes and Miracles. And it's essentially, again, that wormhole is talking about that transcendence moving um, out of the rules of space-time and shifting into something um, outside of that known reality and that's where miracles happen okay but it's already happening there's miracles happening all the time in our bodies in our world can you recognize them are you receiving them because if you can recognize them and you can receive them then you will have easy progress these are like manifestation Huge keys to manifestation, right? All right, three content ideas for your business in this two weeks. We have, what's your experience and or story? So what's your maybe even embarrassing moment that has brought you value, who, who now that experience now teaches you what is worthy of your time and what you are um, valuing to share with others, okay? So for me, um, my experience was that I was waiting on other people to value my voice. Okay. So I was in, uh, an opera singer auditioning and I was like, somebody one day I'm going to have an audition and they're going to say, you are worthy of being an opera singer. And then I'll be able to call myself an opera singer. Right. But I had put in so much work, right. I had put in so much like work out of the passion of the love of the music and being in the process of sharing my voice. And I had done and, and really gone behind, beyond my own boundaries to do so. And I started, and I was always highly critical of myself and I had gotten to a place where I could really enjoy the music that I made and I could enjoy it. Right. And so I had now gotten to a place where I no longer accepted that that other people got to tell me whether it was enjoyable enough for them. So I actually I did the audition, but I didn't I was in an audition when I made the had this realization. Right. And and so I thought about leaving because I just realized I'm not willing to change for them. I went, and at that time, that meant putting on the outfit that I thought would be more acceptable to them in the audition. And I already liked my outfit. I thought I was looking cute. I already felt good in my outfit. And it just became like this thing, okay, why would I do something different than feels good and is enjoyment to me? Why would I not satisfy myself in an effort to get satisfaction from somebody else? Yeah. And that's when I learned to value my voice and how I could value my voice more than I cared about how other people were valuing it. And I was like, whoa, this is a deep dive because I realized we were doing this with the earth. We were doing this with each other and our, and our feminine counterparts. And, um, and I was just like, no. We can't, we have to stop waiting on other people to tell us our value, right? 
talk about in a second. One of my major messages that I feel like I need everybody to hear if they're going to come into my sphere. <laughs> We're going to talk about that in my content in a second. So second content piece, what is the hunger that you satiate? Okay. So there is like in the market, that is the point. There is a, what they call it, demand and uh, whatever, supply and demand. <laughs> okay. That's just the framework of the archetype of business and the market. And so uh, the problem is that people are creating hunger for things that they, people don't really need to survive. Right. And so that's the, that's the problem. But if you, if you're coming from a place of authenticity where you're truly sharing something that, you know, has helped you survive, then we are in the right place. Okay. This is again, not making hunger wrong. It's just saying, can we be on the loving side of it? Can we transcend its 3d qualities of, you know, monetary exchange to, it's what I have to give and I just happen to get paid for it, right? So being heard for me is that. What's yours? What is What hunger do you satiate? I help people set, satisfy the need to be heard. That's what I do. I help people satisfy the need to be valued. I help people satisfy the need to be remembered and impactful. That last piece is huge for me because my people want to search, you know, sh truly shift the world. They want people to be more happy, more healthy, more um, loved. And so, in, and that's a huge impact, <laughs> right? It's not just the monetary impact, although that does count in a world where we need money to survive. We can only we can only fast for so long, right? We only get to opt out for so long before we're opt outing out of life in general, and that's a real thing, too. <laughs> okay, um, and when we do opt out of life in those ways, we do start getting sick. It's part of that dynamic. It's part of being here. Okay, all right. Let's get to the third content piece. <laughs> I'm I'm in my my um, menstrual wisdom right now. How have you helped others realize their value? I love this because if you are helping people, you are helping people realize that they're already whole. This is why the best health um, coaches are telling you, you, you know, you have this, you have an energy within you, you that will um, keep you going. It'll get you to the end of this workout. It will help you implement the things that you need so that you can make better choices. Um, you have a inner dialogue with yourself that's telling you already, this is good for you. This is bad for you. I'm going to teach you how to tune into that and how to choose that, what your body's already telling you more. A great health coach is already telling you why you are highly valuable in that possibility of having that satisfaction, right? So for me, that major message for me is that your voice matters, not just to other people, to you. It's important to you. Your voice is for you first. This is the message that I, I, I love to get to people have a high passion. I am in transcendence. If I can tell more people, your voice matters for you first. And then when you're serving others with it. Okay. So you are already perfect. That's my other one. <laughs> you're already perfect. I am not the reason you're being satiated. P part of the reason you're being satiated in my work is because you showed up to it. <laughs> right. So you did that. You're showing up, you continue to do the work, right? So I love to tell people you are already perfect and you are just finding more of that in, in your life and seeing more of that as evidence as you choose to be aware of it, 
right? What we were talking about earlier. And also I help other people realize their value that they are divinely right. <laughs> so even when you mess up, you're divinely right. There is a reason why you make the choices you make. There's a reason why higher self chooses the experiences of possible failure or trauma even. There's a reason divinely you're all again, already perfect. If we can tap into the divine rightness of what we know from our experiences, that is wisdom. Share it with others and we are on the right track. So the beauty of, of the, the other components of this programming partner is in Sagittarius and that impatience turns to patience which again can only be done by making a choice. It's the only way that happens. The channel completion, so it comes from the throat to our emotion center. Again, we can speak, we can speak ourselves into satiety. We can vibrate ourselves into the, into the miracle. And that's what I teach in vocal creatrix and vocal alchemy, right? Uh, so that completion, that completion, turbulence is the shadow. The gift is humanity here. Okay, so if we are speaking hunger, we're creating more turbulence. If we are speaking love, appreciation without condition, we are speaking humanity regardless of how it appears, how messed up we really are, how much the voice seems like it's wrong, that we are still valuing it, right? You're still, it's an appreciation that even in the missteps, it's an adventure. Like, let's appreciate that adventure because it's teaching us that next new beautiful wisdom that we get to share how much more abundance can that be there's plenty of mistakes i know i've made, made them made them right if all of that was hidden gold would you appreciate it then because it is that's it for today folks i hope that you join me cosmic prosperity is starting tomorrow i have the the um Cosmic Prosperity Strategy is now something that you get to pay for. It's a good um, investment, I think, if you are interested in applying energy and cycles to how you are perceiving prosperity in your life, how you can vibrate into the genius or the gift of that prosperity of each of those places in the cycle. And so it's, it's good stuff. It is good stuff. And we're doing a free version of the the Cosmic Prosperity Quest. I hope you join me. That one's going to be kind of storified. I'm going to put it on stories and I'll have you a little thing that will help you discover something new about your prosperity. And that will be on the stories in YouTube, I guess. I don't know. We'll decide. If I, I think I'm going to do it on Instagram and then TikTok. I'm starting to do stuff on TikTok. So maybe you can join me over there if you want to hang out. Okay, guys, I will see you on the next transit. Ta-ta.